<laughs> Bire Eze has left Quitties Park Rangers. So Abire Eze has left Queen's Park Rangers. He is now playing for Crystal Palace after the two teams agreed a deal worth, hopefully at some stage, £20 million. Pounds. I'm going to talk about my experiences with Abire Eze as a football fan, going to watch QPR, how he played for us, how he might fit in at Crystal Palace, and if he is actually ready for the Premier League. So you might see that my eyes are a little bit puffy right now, and that's not because I've been crying. I've not been crying. You're crying. It looks like the deal has been done. Uh, he will be playing Premier League football next season. Unfortunately, not with my team, Queen's Park Rangers, but with Crystal Palace. Lots of teams were linked with him. Fulham, Newcastle United, West Ham United, but Crystal Palace and Roy Hodgson seems to be the guy who's been able to convince him to stay in London, which is probably something that what that Abire has wanted to do all along. But importantly, go to Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace is a very functional team, and they're taking a player with a level of flair that I haven't seen since Adele Tarrapt. This guy has something very, very special. We noticed it from the very first moment that we saw him. <laughs> and if I say we, I'm talking about QVR fans. We saw him in an FA Cup third round game. We only saw him for five or six minutes because he got injured. And it was devastating because even in those couple of minutes, you saw that when he got on the ball, he literally just trotted about the pitch, got on the ball and was so composed and comfortable. And that hasn't changed ever since. What has changed is his tactical awareness and his work rate. The guy has worked so hard to become the main man at a football club. And I say that point specifically because Abire Eze plays in a number 10 role. He is a number 10, which is so great that we've still got these kind of players. And it's, it's a huge part of QPR's history. They've always had number 10s. Rodney Marsh, Stan Bowles, Akos Buzaki, Adele Tarrapt, John Byrne. There's loads. The list goes on. It's always been a big part of QPR. We've always been willing to give those players an opportunity. And we wanted to do it with Abir Eze because it signalled a new philosophy at QPR. We'd spent so much money on pish. <laughs> and it was about time that we started to bring through players ourselves. And that is something that QPR is now doing. It's doing really, really well. And this is the first and hopefully a long line of players that come to QPR, flourish, and then inevitably move on because we are a selling club. And that's the great thing about this is that we've, for the first time in a long time, we've been strong in our value of a player. £20 million for a championship player is a lot. Is he at that Neil Malpai level? He's obviously a very different player, but he is. He is. He is so good. And he's going to do bits in the Premier League. Of course, he gets so much more hype because of the little bits of showboating. That Little bits, lots of showboating. But it's all functional showboating that he offers up and it gets clipped up and it gets put on Twitter. But this guy is one of the best players I've ever seen at QPR, and he's unique. He really is unique. I haven't seen many players that are as elegant as Abire Eze. So if we have a look at the situation, he's on his way to Crystal Palace. The deal, I think there's going to be add-ons involved, uh, which is fine. Uh, he didn't play in the preseason friendly against FC Wimbledon uh, earlier well, at the weekend because of this position and they didn't want to put him in an awkward position, which again highlights the situation and the way that QPR are going to play moving forward when it comes to the transfer market. And he, he goes with our blessing. He does. I think QPR fans, let me know. And if you are a QPR fan, you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure you do. Because I'm going to be talking about all sorts. And look, I've got my new setup here. Hopefully you like it. The aim is to do a lot more videos, just having a quick chat about different stories that I find interesting. So if you like this content, Hit the subscribe button. Let's get ourselves moving up to 50K. But back to Abir Eze. Last season was absolutely superb. Let me show you his stats. So for QPR, he was the main man. He was absolutely everything. 46 games, 14 goals for Queen's Park Rangers. Uh, started to take some of the penalties in the second half of the season. Eight assists as well. And the way that we saw him and the way that I want to see him at Crystal Palace is playing in that number 10 role. Under McLaren, sometimes we were very, very, I say sometimes, constantly, we were negative. And he, we were asking for him to do sort of individual brilliance, which is actually something 
that's kind of similar to Crystal Palace. We had two banks of four, and then he was up there on his own, hoping to get the ball and hoping to do something. That might be something that Roy Hodgson wants him to do at some stage, but I think he's a little bit better than that. Under Mark Warburton, it was a much more possession-based style that we were able to employ. The thing with Mark Warburton is you have plan A and you don't have plan B. It's about possession. And so he was always going to thrive in this setup. We finished 13th in the league, yet we scored one of the highest amounts of goals in the league. And the league for me, and QPR season for me, it can be summed up into two halves, really. Whilst we had Narky Wells and once we lost him. The one weakness that I would put at Abir Eze's door is actually his finishing isn't that great sometimes. He's one of those, he's got that kind of that Raheem Sterling vibe where he gets himself into these fantastic positions and now all he's got to do is just take a breath, hit the ball cleanly and put it in the corner. And on occasion, he does fluff his lines. So those 14 goals, some of those coming from penalties, there could have been a lot more. There could have been a lot more, but still, 14 goals, 8 assists in a team that finishes 13th in the league. It highlights just how great he is and what a season he had. This was the setup that we saw at QPR last season. We saw it throughout the season. And when I'm talking about the difference between Narky Wells and not having Narky Wells, the point is, is that with Crystal Palace, you've got people like Zaha, you've got people like Townsend. They utilise their wingers in a big way. They're crucial to the way that Crystal Palace play. So for Abir Eze, it's going to be interesting to see what position he finds himself in. We'll look at Crystal Palace in a second, but look at the QPR for the second half of this season. You've got Bright Say Samuel, who actually at the start of the season wasn't always playing because we had Narky Wells, Ilias Chair had come on the scene and played really well for us, and Abir Eze, often playing as that three in a 4-2-3-1. We had quite a fluent team, not those, not that same amount of wingers, that same amount of pace. We almost had Ilias Chair, Narky Wells, and Abire as a just sort of dovetailing each other, get, picking up the ball in areas within a team that had high levels of possession in a game, it, within the team that stretched the play and looked to use the width and to create those gaps in between. And those three players, they tore defences apart at some, sometimes. You also had Jordan Hugel as a bit of a battering rank up there sometimes as well. Second half of the season, Bright Say Samuel, who was still playing in some of the games, uh, in the first half of the season. But once Narky Wells went, you had Bright Say Samuel there, almost playing as that right winger. He stayed up there, he stayed wide. And so that allowed Abir Eze to always start on that left-hand side. He will generally start on that left-hand side because ultimately you want him to move into central areas. And because he is right-footed, he's able to do that as a starting point. Defensively, he puts the work in. This will be a huge thing that Roy Hodgson will be be really excited about in terms of his development over the last year. That difference between the 100 games and 150 games, that's what we saw with Bir Eze. He had that season the season before where it was a bit frustrating at times. He flat to deceive. There were moments where he was just frightening, but then other moments where he just drifted out of games. And so this season, he came and he came correct because he's now a man. He is now good to go. He's now ready for Premier League football. But the work rate that came from him as well, from a defensive point of view, you don't expect it from someone who's such a flair player. But Roy Hodgson will be delighted to see that because we know how functional Roy Hodgson likes his teams to be. So when it comes to this side here, Abir Eze, he took an even stronger role in the team because Ilias Chair kind of played in those pockets, sort of almost away from the ball because he doesn't have that same explosive pace as Abir Eze, leaving space for Abir Eze to drive with the ball, to dribble with the ball, progress past players, commit players. And importantly, this is the crucial thing. If you take anything away from today and this video, Abir Eze is a number 10. Yes, defensively, you can put him out on the left, do not make him play as a winger. It will not work. He doesn't have that same explosive pace. And you are missing out on the X factor of Abir Eze, which is the ability to have the awareness to be surrounded and somehow wriggle out of it every single time. So when it comes to how he's going to play in this Crystal Palace team, you're going from a team that scored a lot of goals to a team that didn't score that many at all. So let's take a look at how Crystal Palace are going to set up because it will be very different to what Abir Eze is used to. Eze 14, Wells 13, Hugo 13, lots of goals in this team. We go to Crystal Palace, not so much, but that's of course to be expected. The Championship is a very different league to the Premier League and Crystal Palace, it's worked with how they've played. They've been functional, they rely on the individual brilliance at times of the likes of Zaha, Townsend and then generally be functional, good at set pieces and just a good solid Premier League team. 
So that's what Abir is going to move into. So it will be a very different system for him to play in. In terms of the setup of Crystal Palace, this is what they generally put together. 4-5-1. Again, those early, sort of deeper starting points for the likes of Zaha and Townsend. This is very similar to the way that McLaren set up Queen's Park Rangers. And it worked, but it worked without scoring too many goals. If you're expecting a Eze to score another 14 goals in the Premier League, I can't see it happening because I don't think Roy Hodgson will kind of let go enough for it to happen. What I see happening and what I hope happens is that of that midfield three, one of those guys makes way. Be it MacArthur or Kiate, Milivojevic, I can't see him coming out as the captain of the club and he's generally been very, very consistent for them, plays in a very different role. And actually, Milivojevic might be the player who's able to get the ball to Eze quickly to allow him to play, obviously, further up the field and in central areas. As I've said before, he is a number 10. Roy, listen to me here. Do not play him out wide. It is pointless. You're wasting 20 million if you do that. So what I think we'll see is, I actually think we'll see a, a better Crystal Palace, an evolution of Crystal Palace. They'll look to get on the ball more and the opposition will be a lot more concerned. When you've got Townsend, Zaha and Abir Eze, Jordan Ayew, who scored nine goals last season and was very impressive, I think he'll get a lot more space. Jordan A will be able to run in behind. And actually, you might actually be able to twist it up a little bit. Let Abiria Eze have that little bit of freedom. Allow him to be that attacking midfielder. It doesn't have to get back as much because you've got other midfielders doing the work. And let him get the ball in those little half spaces. He has the ability and the awareness to, to turn. And then Jordan A can play on the shoulder. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the likes of Ben Teke. Because... I think that can still be of use. But with QPR, we had a similar kind of thing. We had Jordan Hugel up front, who's that same kind of battering ram. But we had our fullbacks getting crosses in. In particular, Ryan Manning for us was, was deadly with his crosses for Jordan Hugel. So can you get that same kind of thing with Crystal Palace? Maybe against the better teams, you might see that. You might see Benteke and Eze playing uh, almost up front together, but Eze doing that defensive work that he's willing to do. So there you have it. <laughs> Abir Eze, a message to you my friend you've been superb you've been exactly the blueprint of what we want to see at QPR now we want to see young hungry players who have been discarded by bigger teams we want you to come to QPR we want you to do bits we want you to entertain and then we'll be happy in allowing you to go that's the philosophy that QPR thrived on in the 80s and 90s and it's something that we need to get back to and that's what we're seeing now importantly i'm pleased that we've got we've stuck to our valuation and it seems like we've got it hopefully the add-ons aren't too <laughs> too wishy-washy and we are getting what we want from him and hopefully there's a little buyback clause in there because that would be nice as well because uh, you, look it is a massive jump final question is is this guy ready for the premier league my one concern is his lack of pace and if you go from a team that's controlling the ball, making the pitch big and dominating possession. And then he goes to a team where he's going to be starved of that and the expectations are going to be very high on Eze. Are we actually going to see what we want? Are you actually, is he going to be disappointing? Because the, the thing with the number 10 is you are the talisman for a team. If you're going to be given that license to play number 10, you have to deliver and you have to be the best player on the pitch, really. So he's got to make that jump. It's not a defensive mid midfielder who's got to come up to the Premier League level and just keep the ball and be tidy. This is a beer as This is a number 10 and this is big money. So he's going to have to deliver with assists and goals. I think the first season might be a little bit of a struggle for him. But overall, this guy has the attitude as well as the talent to be a really high quality Premier League player. Can he get right to the top? I think it just depends on just how fast his, his, his brain is because his brain is far too fast for the championship. But in the Premier League, everyone's got everything. Everyone's got pace, everyone's got intelligence. So can he deal with it? We will find out soon enough, but I wish you all the best. I think all QPR fans would say exactly the same, which is not always the case when players move on. So let me know what you think about Abir Eze. Have you seen much of him? Do you think he's ready for the Premier League? And do you agree with me? Do you think he's going to play as a number 10 or do you think he'll get stifled at Crystal Palace? Should he have gone to a West Ham? I was saying he should have gone to maybe a Brighton if they were able to go and sort of stump up the cash. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, if you're new to the channel, then hit that subscribe button. 
and uh, I'll see you very soon.